Alrighty. Very casual. <laughs> Pick my glass. Yeah, I think I want to understand people's um, actions and why they do things. And um, I think you can pass so many people on the street and I do think behind everyone there's a story. And I don't really choose to, to make a work about something. It happens to be that work. Sometimes I feel weird to call them projects as well because it, I feel like they uh, are my life. <laughs> Vicky de Porter ist nicht nur eine sehr junge, engagierte Fotografin, die sich mit ihren Objekten ganz intensiv auseinandersetzt, sondern sie verbringt eben auch Zeit mit ihnen. Es geht nicht nur um das Bildermachen, sondern es geht tatsächlich um die Frage, welche Rolle nimmt der Fotograf oder die Fotografin in Bezug auf das Objekt überhaupt ein? Dürfen wir bestimmte Bilder machen? Welche Bilder sind erlaubt? Und welche Bilder sind an unterschiedlichen Stellen auch dann problematisch, obwohl sie existieren? Also der Besuch der Ausstellung von Bigge de Porte ist an unterschiedlichen Stellen sehr intensiv. Man taucht ein in eine Bildwelt, in eine Recherchewelt. Es gibt äh, massive Wanninstallationen, einen ganzen Rechercheraum, der über und über gefüllt ist mit Bildern, als sie versucht hat, Michael dieser einen Figur wieder auf die Spur zu kommen. Der andere Raum, wo sie sich mit Agatha auseinandersetzt, ist quasi, zeigt auch so eine Interaktion mit dieser Figur. Also es sind sehr massive Räume, die wir als Installationen jetzt auch bei CU Berlin gerade zeigen. I think you enter a conversation between me and Agatha and me and Michael. I think both Michael and Agatha want to have their story out in a way. And I also think the idea that there is an audience is a really important part of the work. Because, for example, with Agatha, the realization that someone is looking at her and looking at me and looking at us making the work had changed. And with Michael, I feel it's the same because Michael itself, he made those materials not necessarily only for me. I think he really wanted his story out and he wanted to communicate his life. So I think it's a way of communicating and a way of conversation. And I hope it doesn't stop with the exhibition. I think it's, yeah, I think the, the audience looking at it is important too. So you will be part of a conversation, I think, I hope. I met Agatha uh, in a strip bar in Paris where I was um, invited by the bouncer. Agatha was dancing there and we started to talk and I didn't photograph that night. She invited me to take pictures of her house the next day and that's the pink image. I met Michael on the streets of Portland, Oregon in 2015 and he was walking around uh, by himself and I started to talk to him and um, when I asked him where he lived he invited me to his home and that's when I entered his mind as well I think. So, um, yeah, I only s saw him in real life three times and then he disappeared. I don't see project as fixed or finished because I often like have new ideas and maybe I don't agree with how I saw things before. Yeah, both projects are also ongoing. Uh, I don't know, I never know when they will end. With Agatha first I was really the photographer and she was a subject and it really is changing throughout the years we, we know each other. So now in the end of the exhibition you see that she also wants to become a photographer and maybe, and she's a, she is a writer as well. And her work is really important, like her writing and how we communicate about the work came part of the work. In dem zentralen Raum zu Agatha sieht man eben eine Rauminstallation, wo man sehr schön sehen kann, wie die beiden miteinander über Jahre interagiert haben. Für Videoarbeiten, aber auch irgendwie das Zusammenspiel von Fotografin und Objekt. Agatha ist ja Objekt und das muss man die ganze Zeit be- und hinterfragen, 
Welche Rolle spielt die Fotografie im 21. Jahrhundert eigentlich als Gegenüber, als was, was Bilder macht und dann auch eben veröffentlicht von Situationen, die manchmal eben vielleicht auch zu intim sind? Mit Agatha, wir haben das constant push and pull of who's making the decisions and what can go on the walls. We made this book together and maybe it was more about me than it was about her. So then we reacted on that. In the beginning of the exhibition you will see like a booklet and it's a transcription of a talk she gave where she's kind of criticizing the book and where she's um, asking me to um, collaborate more in the way she wants to do. So after that talk, we decided to um, make more work and that she will take the lead and she's giving me assignments. Like I photographed her new escort images. Um, I photographed her having sex with her boyfriend. And for her, it's a way to, I think, research her uh, sexuality as well. And if she wants to continue sex work. Agatha and Bieke sind mittlerweile um, Freundinnen. Und natürlich ähm, hat das Ganze angefangen, dass ähm, sie als Objekt vor der Kamera auch eine bestimmte Rolle eingenommen hat. Sie spielt vor der Kamera, sie, ähm, es ist natürlich auch wie ein Theaterstück. Ne? Wann darf die Kamera überhaupt dabei sein? Ja, yeah, ich feel like I know Michael pretty well now. Because like if you enter in his house, Like all those um, things on his wall, it looks random, but it's totally not random. Like I understand, I started to like investigate his disappearance, but also try to understand his life. And now I understand the connections he's making in his books and his scrapbooks, but also on the walls. So it's totally not random. And if you zoom in on something, on a person, I think at the same time, you zoom out and say something about society without me even intending it to be. Like someone can just disappear and no one cares or no one knows. Yeah, I start to try to understand, um, go to the places that he's describing in his letters, for example. So to understand and to see life as Michael is seeing life. So that's how I get to know him pretty well.